InfoWars. Tomorrow's news today. All right, listen to me very carefully, listeners. Because the last few weeks I've been thinking about making this announcement, and I haven't done it yet because I don't want to be premature. But I was just thinking before I went live about two minutes ago during the break that I don't want to be taken off air before I give you this warning. And I want you to understand something right now and get it through your head 100%. We already sent the bat signal out. We already got Trump elected. You see nationalism exploding everywhere worldwide. But anybody that doesn't understand that there's not going to be a globalist counteroffensive to that is blind. And I can tell you right now for sure, for sure, they made a lot of preparations. But we told you about the, them spying on Trump and the martial law plans and all that's in the news. I'm here to tell you, they may pull back. But currently intellectually and gut level, they're already in motion. The switch has already been flipped. And a year in politics and life is like a millisecond. So a month or two is like a twinkling of an eye. The, the switch has been flipped to not just take Trump out. A lot of folks go, well, you know, Trump's been great or whatever, but what do I worry about? <laughs> they were going to have Hillary captain race war, sex war, division, economic collapse to then organize us and make everybody capitulate to get their pension funds back and their 401ks to agree to whatever they said, federalization of every city, every police department, uh, the Strong Cities Initiative run by the UN, the chi -coms funding it all through the universities. This is decades of preparation and traitorous activity. So understand, America is on its last legs right now. Trump was a speed bump. I was even reading this great article out of the London Center on the Hill, America, the New Socialist Frontier. And they say that Trump was just someone that, that they say slowed it down. I was talking to Roger yesterday. I said, Trump's been a speed hump. And that's it. So notice all the, quote, socialist women elected, and it's all over the news, uh, meet the, you know, here it is, opinion. But where are the furies, President Trump? And it's like, look at these incredible women, uh, Meth Mouth Cruz and these others marching together. And it's all about women. Oh, we're about to take America over and all this crap. Nothing to do with women. It's just cold-blooded social engineering. And so they plan to overthrow Trump and then put America into a civil war. See, we're trying to stop a civil war. They're, they're, they're saying, yeah, we want your kids. Yeah, we want your guns. They're trying to push us into it and give us no choice. So, Roger, I'll get your take on this as a seasoned political analyst, but I know you've been involved in nine campaigns, four or five administrations. I, I, I don't think you disagree with me about how dire our straits are right now. And I can tell you right now, the trigger's already been pulled. There's no putting the bullet back in the barrel. And the bullet's about to leave the barrel, and then it's going to traverse its, its, its trajectory right into our head. But if we metaphysically understand that and move out of the way... We at least have some chance, but it, it's on. Trump doesn't get it. He doesn't understand. He thought he'd turn the economy on. He'd let black folks out of prison that the Democrats put in there. He thought he'd pull us out of these wars and Democrats would like it. They never cared about wars. They just like to bitch and act like peaceniks. They love wars. So uh, he's going the route of JFK. In fact, I'd say Donald Trump's already dead. I predict he'll be dead. or I think They're not going to leave him walking around. I think he'll be dead by, by March 15th. The pre it's already been decided to kill the president. Once they get the new attorney general in, he's deader to doornail. What do we do to stop that? Or is there any hope for him? In fact, let's just say he's dead already. What do, what do we do for our children? Trump's dead. Trump's, right, Trump's dead. Oh, no, no. He's dead already. So he's dead already. What do we do? No, just admit it. He's right, dead. He's gone. It's over. He's dead. So what do we do? Trump's dead. He's dead. He died. His family's sitting there, all cowards, lined up except for Don Jr., going along with it. He's dead. What do we do? God, I pray that you are wrong. But he's but dead. He's departs, dead. He's dead. Go ahead. Uh, you know, it's what's ironic about this, of course, is that every day goes by, we learn more about the uh, the plot to lay out this takedown, this coup. We learned last week that Bruce Orr uh, did, in fact, warn the FBI about the origins of the fake dossier that was used as the underlying rationale for the spying that was meant to use to take Trump down, the core of what the deep state is so desperate to cover up. 
so, but the American people, because the mainstream media just doesn't care, that story, an incredible story by John No, no, Sullivan, no, the American you know, people don't know, but what really matters is Trump doesn't know. Yeah, well, the, the, how he could not know about, about Bill Barr is beyond me. And, of course, the obvious question is, Whoever recommended Barr, whoever pushed him within the president's circle, did not have the president's best interests at heart. And the president needs to fire that person right now. Look, the time, the hour is late. He can declassify the FISA warrants, which lead right to Barack Obama, and I think turn this entire situation around. No, I agree, but before, no but before this new guy gets in, that. who does he appoint for the Uranium One that totally changes the subject to reality? Well, right now, the acting attorney general has the authority to appoint anyone. What's wrong with Andrew McCarthy? I would appoint him. Uh, and uh, this FBI director's got to go. I would fire him immediately and put former New York Police Commissioner Ray Kelly, someone Trump has known for 50 years, in that job. There are patriots who are willing to step into this government, but the call never came because Reince Priebus uh, and his minions were blocking those people. Uh, and that's uh, that is a, a sad fact. And now the chickens have come home to roost. I actually wonder whether the seeds of the president's destruction were not sown way back in January and February and March when Steve Bannon made no effort whatsoever to get Trump loyalists in this administration and the White House and the cabinet was peopled by swamp creatures whose only interest was returning to the status quo. And by the way, when I say Trump's dead, he's done. Politically, he's dead. Everything's dead. They're making their move. You can see it. The total shutdown of all conservative nationalist media, you know, even uh, famous top preachers, big shutdown. It's all happening. It's clear as day. And if we don't do something, it's our fault. And, if, and I, I, I want to get people ready. Because I told you Trump was coming. I told you the nationalism would sweep the world. We're still winning worldwide. But those of us that are on the tip of the spear, we got to get ready to pay our pay our up and to you know God to get this done. But we have to understand that we have to get the base ready for Trump's assassination. We, 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 clearly, they're not going to just remove. Him. They're going to kill him. They're not going to leave him out there wandering around saying stuff or fighting back. So they're getting ready to kill him in the next ninety days. Uh, I don't think anybody can disagree. And we're only saying this to try to save the president. And, and, and just separately, imagine this is our last broadcast ever, Roger, because it could be any day. What do we say to the listeners? Because, because this is what this is all about. This is the dire straits we're in. Let's not lie to the audience about this. Well, first of all, we, we, we're not folding. We're not quitting. We're not running. We're not heading for the tall grass. I myself have been fighting for two and a half years, and I will continue to fight no matter what. But the president is besieged. Yet today, Alex, he still has the power to save himself today. Soon that will not be the case. What you're looking here, in my opinion, is a complete rerun of the Saturday Night Massacre. Trump will wake up only when it is too late. He will then move to fire his new attorney general, and that will trigger the uh, the chain of events, just as it did with Nixon. For well, how does he removal. pull this nominee now? Uh, because his advisors will tell him that it's too late, that he can't do so. No, no, but how does he do out. it now? Uh, Trump, how does he pull uh, uh, the literal, you know, daddy of Robert Mueller out? He's got a, a window here in which Matthew Whitaker is still the acting attorney general. Whitaker is, by all measures and all reports, a patriot. He's got the the ability to uh, to appoint a special counsel for Uranium One. He's got the ability to... No, I get it. He should do that now before stuff. the new guy gets in. I agree. How do we kill the nomination of the latest swamp creature? Well, hopefully the president has uh, woken up, although I think his advisors will tell him it's too late. His advisors have continued to get him to ignore his... Yeah, because they're a bunch of wimps. They're a bunch of punks and a bunch of scum. Here's the deal, folks. America's borders are being collapsed right now. The UN's doing it. We're on our deathbed if we don't wake up and say something. That's all I'm telling listeners is we've had a lot of warnings before, but this is the maximum warning. All right, Roger and I are talking during the break. Bombshell info from Giuliani. Wait till you hear this. But here's the bottom line. Robert Mueller, after two years of a fake investigation, is honing in, like we told you, on Roger Stone and myself and my dad. We were there two and a half years ago when uh, WikiLeaks was all over the news, giving interviews to 
The Washington Post, The New York Times, CNN, MSNBC, and wouldn't give us one. I called him Hillary's butt plug for not doing it. And so now the Senate's subpoenaing my emails, and we learn what Giuliani is saying is coming next. This is huge. Roger Stone, tell us about this. CNN has just released an interview with Mayor Giuliani, who, of course, is a, representing the president as a private attorney. Giuliani says he has seen documents that indicate that the special counsel told Jerry Corsi that if he would testify against the president, Roger Stone and Alex Jones, that they would give him probation, uh, and that if he did not, he was looking at five years at prison. It appears to me that Jerry decided to try to split the difference, won't testify against the president, because he knows that's, that he doesn't want to be the John Dean of this drama, was perfectly willing, unfortunately, to make up stuff about you and I. I recommended him to InfoWars. I was among several. There's no doubt about that. But the idea that I recommended that you pay him hush money is a canard made of whole cost. It's nonsense. It's false. And then implicating your father, who gives the guy a severance after you terminate him, uh, as if he's done something wrong, is just beneath contempt. I am so disappointed that he's made up lie after lie about well, me. Well, let's make... Well, I'm not trying to brag and act like a big, big, big shot here. But Roger Stone doesn't make any decisions here. No one does but me, which I wish it wasn't. I make all the decisions. The color of the carpet, what's on the video screen behind me. I, I built InfoWars. Not the CIA, not the FBI and all these scumbag white shoe boys who couldn't wipe their own ass. I built this. And I will not sit there and hear this crap that anyone tells me what to say or do. And I'm not trying to brag here, but the idea that, 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 of course, he's been coming on the show for 17 years with four or five number one best-selling books and the top advisor, Lou Dobbs, and he was a smart, good guy, and I was betrayed by him. And I saw what he was when he was drunk talking crap to us in, in D.C. a year and a half ago. And so the idea, the idea that he would then take our goodness to him when he was a falling down drunk and couldn't get his work done and typos everywhere. We have all the emails going, what the hell, dude? Half this article's misspelled. That turns into my daddy thinking they know I'm ready to die, that I would roll over because they're trying to target my father. Makes me sick. Well, uh, how do you think I feel? Here's a colleague who I liked his reporting and is writing at World Net Daily. He now claims completely falsely that he told me that John Podesta's emails had been stolen. That's a lie, an unsupportable lie. Now he's changed his story again, saying that I told him ahead of the NBC Billy Bush tape release that he should tell Assange to release Podesta's emails to distract from it. This is a new iteration of a lie. There is no evidence to support any and of this. And now I'm paying this son of a bitch hush money. Bull crap. So let me ask you this. What does this mean that Giuliani, the president's main lawyer, has come out and torpedoed Giuliani? I mean, he's come out and torpedoed Corsi. What does it symbolize that the president's head lawyer, uh, Giuliani, has come out and torpedoed Corsi? Well, it says more about Mr. Mueller than it does Jerome Corsi. Uh, I think we see the extent they're willing to go to try to get somebody, Jerry Corsi, Michael Cohen, somebody, uh, to bear false witness against the president. Now, I know that Jerry Corsi met with the president when he was a candidate for president. I was not present. I don't know what was discussed in that meeting. So perhaps Mr. Mueller is attempting to put words into Mr. Corsi's mouth within the context of that meeting. Sure, but why uh, would and, Giuliani, uh, who, because he's been pretty accurate so far, in fact, extremely accurate because he knows the truth's the best defense, why, this is bombshell, so he comes out and says that Corsi said what again? Uh, again, I've sent you the actual transcript. Uh, he said he has seen the documents uh, and that Corsi was told that if he would testify against the president, they would give him probation. Now, I've got uh, him right here now. So why, how is Giuliani able to get that? I guess they're throwing this at Trump. Well, somebody obviously leaked this document to the, to the, uh, to the president's attorney. <laughs> Uh, look, we're going to have to, this all happened, you know, within the last hour and a half. So we're going to have to sort it out. I'm just sorely disappointed that Corsi would try to set you and I up uh, uh, in regard to something that we had nothing to do. Uh, well, well but let's a, expand a on that. I mean, let's expand. The fact that moving on from Corsi, we know he's compromised and, and, and sold out. What what do we, what does it mean that, that, that Giuliani knows that this is happening and is willing to say it? The fact that He's coming out and saying that 
Mueller Mueller is allowed is basically pushing lies shows that Trump finally gets this is a, this is this is crap and stop playing games with it because I can tell you right now folks I, I'm a Russian agent like I'm a Pluto lawnmower Easter bunny unicorn uh, purple penguin eater I mean it, it's just like it's ridiculous when the globalists are anti-America they're doing all this we all know this and it's just it's ridiculous to change the subject from their treason. Well, uh, just being very clear, Alex, uh, Rudy Giuliani is about as popular with the White House staff and the Trump inner circle as you and I, because he's a straight shooter. He tells the president what they don't want him to know. Giuliani has been a truth teller in all this, and he has d repeatedly tried to get the president off of defense and onto offense. He's hit Comey. He's hit Mueller. He's been one of the few willing to do so. So uh, believe me, they would like to shut him off from the president as well, but they're not able to do so because of his stature and their long relationship. Uh, you know, people like to shoot it really. He's done this wrong. He's done that wrong. I think he's done more right than wrong here. But take those clips this week where he supposedly putting. take the clips this week. Am I even it's the truth where they said they said that, you know, Trump hasn't colluded. Others may have. He said, I don't know about others. There's open investigations, but Trump hasn't colluded. That isn't saying others colluded. So that's a truthful statement. I don't know about everybody else you're investigating, but Trump hasn't. Let, let, let's play the clip. We've got the clip of Giuliani talking about this. Here it is. As far as I know, President Trump did not have discussions with him, certainly had no discussions with him in which he told him or counseled him to lie. If, if he had any discussions with him, they'd be about the version of the events that Michael Cohen gave then, which they all believe was true. I believed it was true. I still believe it may be true because unlike these People who want to just believe him, I believe Michael Cohen is a serial liar. If you can figure out when Michael Cohen's telling the truth, you're better than I am, Jake. I, and that's what happened to BuzzFeed. They bought a totally phony story. They yeah. weren't going to buy it unless they just, got some phony stuff about federal agents. And then they went with it because they're the same ones who published the Steele dossier when no one else would do so it. You they obviously so, you have a hatred for the president. But you just acknowledge that it's possible that President Trump talked to Michael Cohen about his testimony. Which would be perfectly normal, which so the president so believed was true. So it's possible that that happened, that President Trump talked to Michael Cohen I don't about know if it happened or didn't happen, and it might be attorney-client privileged if it happened, where I can't acknowledge it, but I have no knowledge that he spoke to him. But I'm telling you, I wasn't there then. So it's not significant because the well, version Michael he Cohen gave is, to the... But he's so that's the earlier clip. The new clip's out. We'll get it. The show's almost over. The point is, he's come out, i got the transcript right here, and said that Corsi was promised probation if he'd make up stuff and read a transcript. I mean, for 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 Giuliani to say that that is that is huge. Uh, I agree, Alex. And look, I've I've been in this exact cul-de-sac. Um, it's true. I spoke on the phone with Donald Trump three days before the disclosure of the WikiLeaks, uh, pub, you know, uh, releases. Uh, and there's no evidence that we spoke about this because we didn't. But just juxtaposing those dates, I had both uh, Chris Cuomo and uh, and uh, Chuck Todd insisting, well, you must have spoken to the president about this. No, I didn't. And there's no proof to the contrary. Well, here's the bottom the line. Here's the bottom line. America is in the crosshairs. The Democrats are all over the news. We have all these new clips, the Women's March saying, we hate America, America shouldn't exist. This is the group saying America shouldn't exist and then people that say it should exist, they're Russian traitors, and they should all be arrested. So we're done. We have women sexually assaulting our reporters and laughing in front of police. We have the Democrat lynch mob out of control. We are the Americans. We believe in prosperity. We believe in justice. We believe in truth. We are not Robert Mueller. We are not Hillary Clinton. We are not the deep state. And it's all coming to a head with all these fake news stories about Trump's a Russian agent and BuzzFeed fake stories that are meant to make Mueller look like he's truthful when he says, oh, this is fake. But the next big bombshell's real. It's all coming to a head and we will be covering it all at Infowars.com forward slash show. Mike Adams has his counterthink report coming up for one hour after. It's very powerful. Infowars.com forward slash show. Roger Stone, Infowars.com, Newswars.com. We'll talk to you tomorrow at 11 a.m. Central when I kick off my regular broadcast. But obviously, they're making their move. History's happening now. And I'm not afraid at all. I'm actually jumping up like a jumping jack. This is so exciting. But the listeners better get excited. Thank you, Roger. Thank you, Alex.
This is the most excited I've ever been in my life. This is everything coming to a head. This is the big culmination of all the battles right now. Listeners must take this live feed and share it to everyone or we will fail. We are now in your hands. InfoWars, tomorrow's news, today. Stress is a natural part of life. Work, family, friends, and everyday accidents can put a lot of strain on the body and your mood. Don't let life weigh you down. Happies is a powerful mood and stress support formula that has your back against life's daily inconveniences. Made with ancient ingredients used for thousands of years, Happies can help you take back the day. With our powerhouse formula, Happies can be an important part of your daily supplement routine. With poor diet and the constant on and off of your work life, it's more important than ever to support your body in the fight against stress. With powerful ingredients combined to help support the mind and body, Happies helps support during stress, promotes overall well-being, and helps support your mood. Don't live your life bogged down. Help your body overcome the effects of daily stress and pressure today with Happies from InfoWarsStore.com.